So in configuration management section, we will first of all learn Ansible. So now what is Ansible? The very first question which comes to our mind. Ansible is an open source configuration management tool. Now what do we mean by saying configuration management? So in industry, what happens when we deploy our systems, the systems, even the computer systems that we use, even the servers that we deploy for application uh, to support the application. So time to time, we need to update the systems as in uh, patching. Uh, sometimes we have to up update the applications as well. So all these configuration changes happens time to time. So to manage all these configurations or to manage all this configuration automatically we have ansible so the to manage these configurations using some tools or using scripting or maybe manually that is called as configuration management so now to automate the configuration management we have multiple tools in market one of them is ansible so it can solve wide varieties of problems like patch management, like deploying systems in AWS or in Azure <clears throat> or even in Google Cloud. So it can solve our multiple problems. Uh, so now, okay, Ansible is a configuration management tool, but why, why Ansible? Why not other tools, right? Because Ansible is very easy to learn. When we go ahead with the course, uh, you will see the language is pretty easy. Uh, it is based on Python. The script, the playbook, the syntax which we will uh, write for playbook, the syntax in which the playbook is written, it's pretty simple. So it's very easy to understand. So it's easy to learn as well. And also Ansible doesn't need any agent or client installed in the hosts that we are going to manage using Ansible. So the config, the architecture is only push architecture. It's not push and pull. So you only need one machine which has Ansible installed and rest of the machines hosts. You don't need to install any agent or client on them. There is nothing called as Ansible agent or client. So it is easy to manage using Ansible. So that is one another big benefit of Ansible. So advantages of Ansible, as I said, easy to learn written in Python. Easy installation and configuration steps. No agent is involved, no uh, or client is involved. So, as I said, no need to install Ansible on slave. Highly scalable. It's pretty scalable. We can increase our inventory count from 100 to 200, 200 to 500, 2000 of machine. So, it's easily scalable across the uh, machines where we want to manage the configuration. Now, Another important part, how does Ansible work? See, to manage the configurations of the machines that we have, uh, that we want to, so we write Ansible playbooks. So the files which are used, which are written in Ansible to manage the configuration of the slave machines or the host machines, we write Ansible playbooks, which are written in a very simple language called as YAML or in uh, the full form if we talk about it is yet another markup language which is very easy to learn when we come across learning the syntax of yaml you will get to see that how easy it is to learn so this is how ansible work you write a playbook and you run that playbook in multiple machines to manage their configuration if you want to create users in those machines you can do it through playbook you want to you want to make sure that a file should be present in every machine you can push that file through ansible uh, at once from one machine to from one master machine to 500 of slave machines you can push it at once you don't need to go to every machine and copy the file so now let's talk about one problem statement uh, about the configuration management now suppose there is a guy who wants to install Apache in maybe hundreds of machines okay so if we don't have any automated system then what he has to do? He has to go to every machine and install Apache, right? But now think about when you have configuration management tool, you just write a playbook to do that. And you run that playbook from master machine, from Ansible machine, where you have the list of all, all the 
um, host machines where you want to uninstall Apache, you just run the playbook from master machine and Apache gets automatically installed in all the machines that you have mentioned in master machine. We will see about that when we do the practicals that how we create an inventory file. Now what is inventory file? Inventory file has the list of all the machines where you want to perform the tasks using playbook. That is what inventory file is. And we will see it in practicals how we update the inventory file. <clears throat> so this is how we solve our day-to-day -day problems day-to-day day-to-day manual problems using Ansible. Now we will talk about a very basic architecture of Ansible. Now suppose you are sitting on a master machine or even in any machine if you are sitting what you do you just create a playbook. Now what is playbook? In Ansible the file which is the file which we develop to push the configurations to the remote machines that particular file is called playbook. It contains the tasks that you want to perform in remote machines, in the slave machines that you want to perform or in the host machines. So that is what playbook contains. It contains the tasks. Okay. So now playbook, how will playbook decide which hosts it, it should be, it should hit? It will decide by looking at the inventory file. It will look at the inventory file. Okay. These are the list of hosts where I should perform the task. So it will then check which all modules you have written to perform those tasks because modules we can say that they are the set of functionalities which are used to write the playbook. Uh, if I if I want to relate it to any other scripting language, I can relate it to PowerShell. You have some command that's in PowerShell, right? Get service uh, or get WMI object. So all those commandlets that you have behind them obviously the dotnet code runs similarly modules are we can say in other terms they are the commandlets of ansible uh, the background of modules is python so modules are written in python they are uh, they are the functionalities they gives us a very uh, one liner command to be written in playbook by mentioning the arguments or the parameters as we do in PowerShell, which we can use to run the set of tasks in host machines. Okay, we, you can relate the modules to the CMD lets of PowerShell. So this, so now what happens? You write a playbook, you upload it to master. From master you push the playbook. Uh, so now what happens when the playbook runs, it looks the inventories where it needs to perform the task and check the task which it needs to perform. Then it connects to the host machines using SSH. Through SSH the connectivity happens, remember. The connectivity to the host machines happens using SSH. One Only one requirement is you need to have Python in all the host machines. Because now think about it this way. The modules, they are written on Python. Now to run anything which is based on Python, you definitely need a Python interpreter on all the machines. So that is why we need Python on all the host machines. Now, can you run PowerShell without having .NET in your machine? Without having, you cannot write because in background it has C Sharp written. Oh, sorry, in background it has it is completely written in .NET. If you don't have .NET framework, if you don't have .NET in your machine, how can you run PowerShell? Similarly, if you don't have Python, how can you run the modules which are completely written in Python? So that is the reason why we need Python in the host machines. And it connects to the host machines using SSH. So this is the basic architecture of Ansible. Okay. So now playbooks, what playbooks has? It has the tasks to be executed. Playbook in playbook, you write the tasks that you want to execute in the host machines. Okay, they are kind of instruction manuals that what you exactly want to perform in these host machines or slave machines, we can say in other terms. And it's written in very simple language. We'll see into that. Inventory file. Inventory file has list of hosts where you want to run the tasks when you where you want to run the playbook. 
okay <clears throat> so together both the things inventories and modules and playbooks all together they reside in ansible master okay so this is what the basic architecture of ansible looks like and this is how ansible works okay so this was the very basic theory of ansible that i wanted to talk about from here on from uh, so i'll wind up this video here with this much of theory so from next session we are going to see how we install and configure ansible as per the different scenarios and into the different environments we will also see how we can manage windows machine using ansible